Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks for remembering old Waylon. Miss him. The woman who's about to sing for you now is really a legend. She's one of my heroes, and I'm really proud that she's a friend of mine. Tonight she's going to sing. It's a powerful song that she wrote in the wake of September 11th. She looked around, kind of noticed other people were writing songs about patriotism. And she loved that, but she felt, she felt like the times really called for somebody to write something a little more spiritual. So she wrote this song for her new album, Halos and Horns. Please make welcome one of God's greatest gifts, Miss Dolly Parton. Hello. Are you out there? Can you hear me? Are you listening anymore? Hello, God. If we're still on. Speaking terms, can you help me like the voice? I have questions, your existence, my resistance leaves me cold. Can you help me go the distance? Hello, God. Hello, hello. Oh, this old world has gone to pieces. Can we fix it? Is there time? Hate and violence just increases. We're so selfish, cruel and blind. We fight and kill each other in your name, defending you. Do you love some more than others? We're so lost and confused. Welcome to our podcast for today, our Let's Go to Church Sunday podcast, where we try our best to emulate a church service for you here via online radio, via podcast, uh, however it is that you would be listening. Uh, Welcome to our service today, and I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that uh, you will be able to worship God with us. And what a good opening we had with Dolly Parton singing Hello, God. And we'll have more music as we go throughout the program. It's going to be one of those days where I use different artists. <clears throat> Most of the time, I, um, I'll i get two or three or four songs from a single artist and make them like the artist of the day. But today, I, I've picked out some different uh, artists, and uh, we'll be using that. I'm going to open 
with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this beautiful sunshiny day that you've given us here in central Indiana. Starting to get a little cool outside and we're we're kind of past the the leaves being pretty, so we've changed seasons, Father. And we just thank you for that reminder that you give us each year that while some things in life may change, you never change. You are the God of the Bible, the one and only God, the only one that that we are to serve. And so, Father, I pray that as we give you praise and honor and glory through your son, Jesus Christ, during this podcast, that you will help bless those that hear your word, whether it be in music, whether it be in inspirational and good news audios, whether it be in the scripture that is read or in the sermon that is preached, Father, I just pray blessings upon those who hear. And Father, most of all, if there is someone listening to my voice today, whether it be live right now on the eighth day of November of 2015, or whether it be down the road in archive, I pray that if someone doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be their day for salvation. I lift this up to you through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Well, we're going to play our good news audio this week, and it's kind of long, so stay with it because there is nothing more good news than listening to someone who is a new Christian that has given their life to the Lord. That's the part that there is nothing that can be better. Given your life to the Lord. Listen as Taryn Terrell gives her testimony on being a new Christian. Hi, guys. How's it going? So I wanted to do this video because I was sitting in church today and I had this profound feeling that I needed to do something. You know, I needed to reach out to someone. I've seen a lot of testimonial videos of, of Christians and it's a, a lot of times when they're a lot further along in their Christianity. And for me, I am just a baby believer. And this is the beginning of my journey. And I thought that maybe if I posted this, made this video, maybe it would help someone. Maybe it would help someone who has a lot of the same questions that I did and it felt a lot of the same ways that I did. And maybe it will just sort of help you and guide you to a place of being comfortable enough to walk into a church or comfortable enough to pray or comfortable enough to become a Christian. So I just wanted to sort of share my story with you a little bit and I will try to be as brief as possible. <laughs> um, you know, I was always one of those per those people that felt like, yeah, sure, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And it reminds me of this story. Um, a few years ago, I was, no, quite a few years ago at this point, I was living in Tampa. And, you know, I was always searching for something. Like I, I knew that I wanted to be a believer. I knew that I wanted to believe in God. And I wanted to go to church and worship. And, and I felt all of those things, but I, I never put in the time or the energy. And, you know, I mean, to have a good relationship with anyone, a friend, a uh, spouse, there's a lot of time and energy that goes into that. And so how can I have a relationship with God? How can I call myself a Christian if I don't put anything into that relationship? And so when I was living in Tampa, I found a church, and, and I really liked it. And I remember sitting in church, and tears started streaming down my face. And I just, I couldn't even explain it. I didn't know why it was happening. I, I just, I just needed to cry. And it was a, such a powerful moment for me. And, you know, I said, I need to end the Bible. And so I went to this bookstore, yeah, a Christian bookstore. And I, you know, I was nervous and, and I'm uncomfortable. You know, this is kind of my first time really doing this. And so, 
you know, I kind of want to get in, get my book, and get out. You know, no questions asked, just head down. That's it. Well, of course, I walk in, and the sales associate comes up to me and says, how have you been saved? And I was kind of taken aback, and this is the first time I've ever been asked this question. Have I been saved? Cool. Yeah, I mean, sure, I believe in God, I believe in heaven. I mean, I was baptized, so yeah, sure, I was saved. Anyway, asked where the Bible were, got my book, got out. I went on the road to WRB for a while, and, uh, you know, that sort of want to be a Christian sort of went by the wayside. You know, that was a lifestyle that was, you know, I've lived in, in a regular world, and I've lived in entertainment world, and, and there's temptation in both, but there is something about being on the road and, and living that sort of life and the party lifestyle that you are tempted tenfold. I mean, there is just so much temptation. And, and you know, I lived in sin. I was not a good person. I can say that I'm ashamed of who I was in a lot of ways and, and the decisions that I made. And, and it's because I wasn't a Christian. You know, I lived in sin. And a lot of times I thought, how am I going to be a Christian? How how can I be accepted by God? I have done awful things. I have not lived as a Christian. I have lived as a sinner. And what I didn't understand about being saved was that I could be forgiven. I could I could truly be forgiven for all of the bad things that I've done. I could be forgiven. You know, I I will tell you that the moment that I truly feel and believe that I was saved, all these years of thinking, oh, sure, I'm a Christian. Yeah, sure, I'm going to heaven. I believe that heaven's there. I'm going there. I was speaking with a Christian counselor in June, and he asked me the same question that the sales associate did. Are you saved? Again, I gave the same answer. Yeah, sure. I believe in God, and, and I believe in heaven, and yeah. And it was then that he said, well, that's great, but being a Christian means that you believe in Jesus. You believe that he died on the cross, that he died for our sins, that he was resurrected, that he's going to come again. That is your ticket to heaven. That is your ticket to the kingdom. And it registered. You know, it it was something that I don't know that I'd heard before, or if I heard it before, I didn't truly hear it. And it was a couple of days that it sat with me, and I I got this urge that I needed to go to church. I, I needed to really open a Bible. I really needed to delve into this, because all this time I thought I was a Christian, and I wasn't. And I remember I was driving, and my daughter was in the back seat, and I had this powerful, overwhelming feeling that came over me that somebody died. Jesus Christ died. God sent Jesus to die for our sins. I mean, we're not we're not talking about somebody who just, yeah, sure, hey, you're forgiven. We're talking about somebody who suffered, who died so that we could be forgiven. The heaviness of that came upon me. And I went to church that next week and, and my pastor was talking about the same thing, the exact same thing. I mean, if God wasn't trying to talk to me, then I don't know anything because that was so God reaching to me and saying, understand this, Karen, understand this. This is what makes you a Christian. This is what gets you there. Not by doing good works, which is great, but not by just saying, yeah, sure, I believe. But do you really, truly feel it? Do you really, truly believe? And look, 
this is the beginning of my journey. This this is me, an infant Christian, coming to you because I was just so recently on the other side wondering, what does all this mean? Am I going to heaven? Do I really need to have this personal relationship with God? Can I just be a good person and do good things and isn't that enough? But it's not. It's not enough. You have to have that relationship. So I just wanted to reach out. I just wanted to hopefully, you know, maybe there's someone out there that has those same questions and that thought, yeah, sure, I believe, I was baptized, and I, yeah, sure, I'm going to heaven, but aren't you searching? Don't you want to know what it is that really will truly get you to heaven, to the kingdom, to the glory of God? Look, I don't know much. Like I said, I'm just in the process of beginning to be a Christian, but I am trying to grow and mature and grow in my relationship with Christ. And I just, I pray for for you. I pray for me. I pray for my friends, my family, and all of you that are watching this. Please find your journey. And I just hope that this reaches you. I hope that that maybe this sparks a fire inside of you and that you say, I've sinned, and that you can come before God as a sinner and you can be forgiven. I hope to continue to make these videos as I progress through my relationship with God and my Christianity and 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 I just I hope it helps if it even helps one person. I know the amazing things it's done for me in such a short amount of time. And I want to continue to tell you about those wonderful, amazing things. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. And I look forward to making more videos. God bless you. So a great big thank you to Taryn Terrell, who many of you will recognize as a professional wrestler who is taking time away from that career to work on her life as a Christian. Isn't that something? <clears throat> I love listening to new Christians. Some people call them baby Christians. Uh, you pray for their um, ability to persevere and, and keep that early enthusiasm and I just enjoy that video. I know it was longer than most that I play on here, but it, it's just so good. I, I can't say it any better than what she said it in her own words. Um, as we move forward, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer for our nation. Uh, you know, America is the greatest nation in the world. And I know that there might be others that would disagree, but... I am so thankful that God placed me in the United States of America at this point between the years of 1962 and 2015, and for however long that he decides to leave me on this uh, earth, uh, I I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that our nation was founded upon Christian principles by godly men and godly women, and I'm thankful that we have been blessed as a nation throughout our history, but I don't think it's any secret that we need God in our lives more so. Well, we've always needed God in our lives, but we need God to be placed in his proper place in our lives and in our nation more so than we ever have. Because there is a reason I say that. In the past, we've always put God in his rightful place for the most part. And now 
it seems that we just allow him to slip lower and slip lower and slip lower. And our God is a jealous God, and there is only one place that he will be, and that is at the top. So let's pray now for our great land. Father in heaven, I come before you just now thanking you for who you are and the awesomeness of what you have done throughout the history of this universe. You created all things in six days, and then you took a rest. Father, help us to use the example of the creation in our lives to know that all things are possible through you. And Father, help us to realize that we need to rest on occasion too. Father, I thank you for this country that you have given me and given those of us who live here and have lived here in the past. Father, in the realm of history, our history is short. But Father, I just ask that today that you will bless us again as you've blessed us so richly from even before the time that we were officially founded as a nation. Father, we know the stories of of the pilgrims coming over. We know the stories of the founding fathers. We know that their belief in you even though it is questioned by many, should be unquestioned if they were, if their stories were read and told. And Father, as a nation, we we were founded upon your principles, and you blessed us, and you you made us into the most powerful nation in the entire world. And then, as history shows. people start turning to things other than you. And Father, there are those of us in this country, and I believe that there are more of us than there are more of them, that want you back right where you belong, at the very top of the list of our priorities, not just in our own lives, but in the lives of our great nation. Father, from the president all the way down to the the lowest local elected official i pray for the leaders in this country i pray for their wisdom and for their ability to do the right thing father as far as the president goes i pray that he would bow down to no one but you the god of the bible the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Because we know, Father, that there is no other God with a capital G. All the other gods have to have the small letter G because there is only one true God. As far as those who make decisions that affect everybody in our nation, Father, help them to turn away from their own desires and turn to you. And Father, for those who do turn to you, help them to be strong and help them to be bold. Help them to speak out and help them to not be afraid to let the world know that you are who they follow and that you who gives them inspiration And Father, we have an election coming up in just a little less than a year. And we need godly men and women to win to win these elections. We need a godly president, not one who just claims that they are godly, but one who shows by their fruit that they are a godly person. We don't need a specific party. We need a specific person that believes that you 
are the supreme, that you are the God that this country was founded upon. And as we move on down to all of the other offices, please, Father, provide godly men and godly women. Please, Father, help us to elect them. And then, Father, I pray that once they're elected, they don't give in to the temptation and the power that goes to their heads so many times and go into office doing the right thing for you, Father. And if they do the right thing for you, then that means they'll do the right thing for me and every other citizen of this great United States of America. And Father, I pray for each and every citizen of this great nation that they will not look to the government to solve their problems. Father, you didn't design things for people to look to the government. You design things for people to look to you. And on this earth, Father, you have placed your church, your church that is called after the name of your son, Jesus, the Christians of this great nation. Help us to turn to your son for the answers, to help the church to step forward and be bold and not cowardly and to preach the word in a bold a bold manner and not just tickle the ears of people who who want to give money that want to pretend that they're Christians that want to play church father help us to be the church that you would have us to be in this great nation Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. Father, help us to follow the words that are in your holy scriptures. The words of your son, who is the word. Pray in his name. Amen. Next, we have uh, our inspirational audio. And this comes from a television show called Girl Meets World. And they are in the midst of a what they call Girl Meets Forgiveness Project. And the first part of this audio, a young girl by the name of Maya is talking with her dad who has basically abandoned Maya and her mother. And she is trying to learn about forgiveness. And we, we find how difficult many times it is for us to be able to forgive. And in the second part, she's talking with her teacher who had it was a great influence in her life, and she believes she's failed because she's not quite ready to forgive her father for the awful things that he's done to her. And it's so important to understand that forgiveness is more than just a couple of words because she admits in this piece that she is not angry anymore. But you can tell by her listening to her that she certainly is hurt. And it is a great lesson that forgiveness is a process. This wasn't you, Maya. This was all me. I couldn't provide comfort for you in a lightning storm, and I was no good for you on a sunny day either. I blew every paycheck instead of providing food for the refrigerator. And when you know you're not good for people, you start not showing up, and then you don't show up enough times, and it begins to feel like leaving. Until you do. You're there for your new family, aren't you? What did they do that I didn't do? You never did anything, Maya. You were just a little girl. I was who I was, and there is nothing you did or could have done. I just, 
I wasn't ready for you or anyone. But I think I've changed. These people believe that I am capable of something. They don't know who I was. They believe in who I am now. Who are you? I found a job and I've managed to keep it. I came back to tell you that I am grateful for what you wrote and I am sorry for what I did. I'm glad you're okay. You found a job? I did. Your job was to stay. Look, thank you for telling me your side. My teacher thinks if I forgive you, it'll bring me peace. And he's usually right about these things, but I don't see how he's right about this one. And I can't. Your job was to stay. You don't think I had it in me to allow my father to grow? I'm happy I wrote to you and heard what you had to say. And it makes me feel better knowing that I had nothing to do with what you did. I always thought that this is my fault somehow, but it's not. I didn't do anything. I'm sorry. I wasn't there. You, you turned out great. for so long. I'm not angry anymore. Thank you for coming. I, I, I hope you get home, okay? I'm sorry. I failed. I know you wanted me to forgive him, but I didn't. I couldn't do it. We're wrong about this one, Mr. Matthews. I never expected that, Maya. That kind of forgiveness, it doesn't come so easy. But life is a long time, and I hope you get there someday. But that's never what I was looking for right now. What did you want from me? Maya, did you forgive yourself? <laughs> what a powerful message that we hear in the, in the Girl Meets World series the person who is behind that the most Michael Jacobs uh, feels a great responsibility to share life lessons that we can use and boy there is definitely life lessons in that let's listen to a new friend of the show uh, Joseph Rojas and his group, Seventh Day Slumber, sing a song uh, entitled Gone. Sometimes you're going to think God is gone from your life, but he's still there. Seventh Day Slumber on Let's Go to Church and the Ed Boston Podcast. I'm tired of being
Slumber, and you're listening to the Ed Boston Podcast. Don't turn that dial. Keep it locked. Keep it locked. I love Joseph and his testimony, and if you've not heard that, you can check our archives and look for the Joseph Rojas from Seventh Day Slumber interview, and man, one of the best I've done, not because of me doing it, but because of what he had to say, and not because of him, but because of the testimony that God has put in his life. We're going to read our text today. It comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 24. The title of the sermon today will be, As for Me and My House, dot, 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 dot. That means you fill in the blank. And God's word will fill in the blank. Starting at verse 1 in chapter 24 of the book of Joshua, it says this. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, and officials of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. You lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived in the east of Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. Then Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel. He said for Balaam, son of, he sent for Balaam son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, 
as did the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I give, gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped before the Euphrates River, beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors, the, the ones they served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people. And there at Sechem, he reaffirmed for the them decrees and laws. And Joshua re recorded these things in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there near the oak, near under the oak, near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. And may God grant the blessing of the reading of his word and help us as we prepare to preach from his word. Father, thank you for the opportunity to look at this scripture and I pray now that as I get ready to preach this sermon, as for me and my house, help me to bind everything from my mind and my mouth that would not be from you. Speak through me, Lord, and use me as your servant. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When we look at this and we see that Joshua is... A mighty, mighty leader, not just in ways that would be what we might understand as in a good warrior and a good commander, but he is a good leader because he follows the word of God. What we do here first is we we take a look and and Joshua again reviews God's faithfulness and goodness towards Israel. You know, sometimes we have to be reminded 
of what God has done for us in our lives. And that's what Joshua is doing here in the first few verses. He, he, he tells where they have come from, where they have been, who they have fought, and who he has helped them prevail against. Quite an impressive record when you think about it. From the Egyptians who perished when God parted the Red Sea and allowed the Israelites to cross and then let the Red Sea come crashing down upon the Egyptians. God reminds them through Joshua that you saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. He's telling them and reminding them that the power that he has is amazing. Think about it. They come up to a sea. We're not talking about just the Ohio River, for those of you who live here in central Indiana would relate to as a, a large body of water. We're not talking about that size. We're talking about a great sea, the Red Sea. And he parted those waters. And you might say, for those that have a hard time believing those things, how did he do that? And there are shows on television that explain how that that is possible. Uh, here's what's possible. With God, all things are possible. And he parted that sea. And not only did he part it, but think about it. If you, if you had a huge body of water and somehow was able to part, think about all the muck and the mud and everything that would be there. It would be impossible, not just for you to walk across, but to have all of your possessions and everything go across. And he made it dry. Because he is God. Showing great love and compassion for his people. And, and in this point in time, his people were the Israelites. Today, we are all his people. Those of us who call on the name of Jesus, his son. And so he loves us just as much as he loved those Israelites that crossed through the Red Sea. And he does for us similar things. Every single day, miracles still happen in the year 2015. I seen on my Facebook page earlier today, maybe last night, I'm not sure, a story, not a story, but something that a, a young man wrote about his father. His father is a man I used to work with many, many, many years ago. And this boy, who is now a man, is worried because they just found out his dad has cancer. It was a heartbreaking post asking for people to pray for his dad. And it, my comment on there for him was, God is still in the miracle business, praying for complete recovery. You see, because God is still on the throne in the year 2015, there is nothing that is beyond his control. There is nothing that is beyond the realm of what he can do. And whether it be cancer or any other illness or disease, whether it be the sin and the temptations that we go through, God can get us through. Well, that sounds like good words, preacher. Well, I can tell you, and I can give you example after example after example where God does just that. I think about stories where people can't explain how they're still alive. But I can. It was God. I think about stories that People say there is no humanly excuse 
that I made it through? I say, yes, there is. It's God. That's the excuse. So Joshua lists here for his people what God did in the days of Abraham and then in the days of Moses and then finally in the days of Joshua himself. But then he gets down to the nitty-gritty a little bit. That's the past. And in your life, what has gone on before and the reminders that you may have just like Joshua was given the Israelites, people may remind you of your past. You can't change that. And so Joshua has them to look at what they must do. What is it that they must do now that they are in the promised land? First thing he tells them, fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. Fear the Lord. Why fear the Lord? Well, listen to the very next thing he says. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. If you're serving something other than the God of the Bible, and it doesn't have to be some physical object idol, if you're serving mankind, if you're serving your job, if you're serving money, you're, even if you're serving your family, all of those things above God, then you better throw the gods away and get your priorities in order. Throw away your family? Not literally, but God has – on our list of priorities, I, I've been taught forever and ever that God comes first, your family, then your job. And if you got them out of order, then you need to get them in order. And that's what he's telling them. Fear the Lord, and then serve him with all faithfulness. Because after he tells them to throw away those other gods, he says, and serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. And then comes one of the more famous lines in all the Bible. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the god of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We all have a choice. We can serve other things. And our country has gotten off track by serving other things. And what we need in America, America as a whole, is to stand up and say, but as for me and my household, as for me and my country, we will serve the Lord. Praise God. We will serve the Lord. And if we do that and we get our priorities straight again, we will once again reap the rewards of the great nation. That's what we have to do. And the people answered, well, far be it from us to forsake the Lord. We're going to do it. We'll, believe us, Joshua, we'll do it. Joshua knows. He knows people. He said to them, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God and is a jealous God. And he knows that people are going to turn their backs on God and serve things other than the God of the Bible. 
He's a jealous God, and he will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. Now, what he's talking about there is not just the sins of everyday life, but he's talking about the sins of serving something other than him because God does not put up with that. And America needs to understand that. Christians have got to speak out and no longer set back while other people give our country away to things other than God. You see, Joshua knew people, and he, he's given us the example right here. And God will not put up with, with us as a nation serving things, serving people, serving anything other than him. He won't put up with it. Verse 20 says, if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. God has been good to America. And how dare we turn our back on him? How dare we not give him the credit for who we are and what we are? Shame on us as a country. We ought to be embarrassed. But the people come back to Joshua. No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua puts it right back in, your, in their lap. He said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Okay, you said it. You're going to have to prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Throw away the foreign gods that are among you. Yield your hearts to God, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. That's what we need to be hearing right now. We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. That ought to be preached from every pulpit every Sunday. Not this candy-coated, silly stuff that people want to hear to make them feel good. Every week, every day, every month, every year, we ought to be screaming at the top of our lungs, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. And not just with our mouth, because Joshua knew that them saying that was not good enough. How many people on Sunday morning say, oh, Lord, please, 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 I'll do my very best. And then Sunday afternoon, forget about waiting until Monday, but Sunday afternoon they start going out and living a sinful life again. Joshua knew. And so he made a covenant for the people. And he said it there to after he reaffirmed for them the decrees and the laws. He took a large stone and he set it up under the oak tree near the holy place, near the temple that they had. I'm sorry, near the tabernacle. Got a little ahead of myself there. Not The temple isn't there yet. Joshua gave the example, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And then he put something there to remind them. Joshua sets the large stone there so that they will remember when they decide to start doing things other than serving the Lord. That... They made the promise. Maybe in your life you need to have a rock, a stone. And if you don't have an oak tree, that's okay. Place it somewhere where when you walk by and you see it, you remember that covenant that you made with God. That you would stand up 
and hold your fist up and say, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Make it somewhere where you can see. Put it on the mirror in your bathroom where you're going to go by it several times every day. We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Remind yourselves. Put it multiple places. Put it on the dash of your car. Put it on the desk you have at work or your work area. Make that your anthem in life. We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Not just we, but me and my house. Narrow it down. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, I thank you for giving these words to us today. I thank you for allowing us to bring this church service that we do each Sunday right here on a podcast. Father, I'm praying now that if somebody is listening to this right at this moment and haven't made that commitment that they and their house will serve the Lord, that they will do so right now. And as we listen to this beautiful song, telling us how much we need you. When we come back, Father, help them to be ready to take that plunge, that leap of faith to become a follower of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
right now? I'll answer for you. Yes, you do. I do. Everyone does. So, yeah, I can answer that for you. But the question is, are you ready to accept God? Are you willing to serve the Lord and obey Him? Are you? I can't make that decision for you. I can't save your life. I can't save your soul. I can help you and guide you to the right resources. I can help and guide you to uh, what needs to happen. But you have to make the decision yourself. And I'm going to give you a chance to repeat what most people call the sinner's prayer. And let me just tell you right off the bat, these words will not save your life, and they will not save your soul. These words read mean nothing without your open heart willing to make them mean something. Just as Joshua knew that the people needed the reminder God knows when your heart is ready. God knows when you say these words, whether you seriously mean them or you're just saying them to feel good about yourself and then go about living your life the way you've always lived. You see, if you mean these words, there's going to be a change take place in your life. People are going to look at you and say, you're different. You don't act the way you used to act. You don't do the things you used to do. You don't say the things you used to say. What happened? And it's a process. It all doesn't take place when we say amen. But it is the beginning of a wonderful, wonderful journey that you should never, ever regret. If you're ready to give your life to the Lord these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, Jesus, amen. I love this part of the show because if you just did that and you meant it with all your heart you just caused the angels in heaven to rejoice. They rejoice specifically for you. God's word tells us that.
But it doesn't stop there. Amen is not the end of the story. It's the end of this prayer, but it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning. You need to do some things. You need to read your Bible. You need to pray on a daily basis, both of those things. If you don't know how, just pick up the Bible and open it and start reading from a certain place. I'm not big on flipping the Bible open and it, it being what you exactly need at that second moment. But pick a place, the New Testament, start in the New Testament, and open and just read forward from there because it's all good. If you want more direction on that and on, on how to pray, you can contact me and I'll help you because it's it's not it's not it's not as hard as what people make it. But I understand that it is difficult for people who don't know what they're doing. You can contact me, ed at edboston.com, and I'll help you. I promise you I will help you. Learn how to pray. Learn how to read God's scripture. I, I, I'll help you with a reading plan to where you won't just have to flip open the Bible. But in the meantime, just open it up and start reading and ask God to help you to understand. Pray to him. Talk to him just like you talk to your spouse or your your parents or your siblings. Talk. Talk to God. The Bible says repent and be baptized. You need, you need to be baptized. And that's one thing I can't do for you unless you live close by. But there, is, there are godly men and women that are preaching the gospel all over this world. And I know that this podcast is available anywhere there is internet. So we've had listeners from all over the world hear our podcasts. If you need to find, not if you need, if you need help finding a local church, again, I would be happy to help you with that. I'm not going to send you to just a specific denomination. I will, I'm will. i a non-denominational person. This is a denominational podcast. But I will do my due diligence and help you find someone in your area, some congregation that you can be a part of and enjoy the fruits of being a part of God's family. And then also to be immersed in Christian baptism. Thank you for being with me today. I went a little extra long, but that's okay. Things don't always have to go A, B, C, D. Things have to go God's way. I'll be back Tuesday and Wednesday night with my regular weekly podcasts. I'll be back next Saturday night with Sports Talk with Ed Boston. And I'm here every Sunday, 2 o'clock Eastern. You can catch me live and worship live, or you can catch it in archive. You can go to edboston.com and find each podcast that is done. You can go back and listen to me interview Joseph Rojas from Seventh Day Slumber and listen to how he was – Messed up on drugs and, and dealing in drugs and had a horrible life and was ready to commit suicide. And God got a hold of him and he's changed and he's winning souls for Christ through the music of Seventh Day Slumber. EdBoston.com will take you to all of our social media, all of our podcast outlets, and we've got big things happening. Not for me but for God. Now go out and do the right thing. God bless.